Hi everybody and welcome back to Lost Genre Reddit Stories. This post is from the subreddit Relationships and it's by user ThrowAwayRoommate1. My 25 female roommates, 30s male and 40s male, want me to pay them to clean our house. I am meeting with my roommate soon and I am so nervous. I would really appreciate some outside perspective. I have been living with Tom, late 30s male, and John, late 40s male, for a little over 6 months. I moved in hastily because I needed a place close to school and it seemed perfect. I was a little nervous living with two older men, but I thought it would be fine since we were all busy and they seemed nice enough. My parents live an hour away, so while I was in school I would go home for the weekend. Now that I have some time off, I like to stay with my parents or my boyfriend, so I'm not even at my place. A few months ago we had a house meeting and agreed to a cleaning rotation. I never used the kitchen or any other room besides my own, which has a private bath. But I agreed to routinely clean the rest of the house because it didn't seem like too big a deal. Each week we would each clean either the kitchen and floors or dust the whole place. It has turned into a nightmare. As I mentioned before, I am not at the house often. I haven't used the kitchen in about 3 months and I have never had to use the dishwasher. A few weeks back I received a text from Tom reminding me to clean the kitchen. I was a little taken aback since I had never forgotten to do my assigned chore and it was only Tuesday, we have the whole week to clean. So I asked if he had any specific reason to remind me. He said no, that it was just a friendly reminder. I thought it was weird but let it go. The next day I received a very strongly worded text from Tom saying that it is my fault the kitchen is dirty because I haven't emptied out the dishwasher, so his dirty dishes are now piling up. I responded with confusion, saying that I did not know that kitchen duty meant being on call to empty out the dishwasher, I thought it was cleaning counters etc. Especially since I never use it and I'm not even at the house. We go back and forth of it and I am pissed. I drive to the house to empty the dishwasher for him and then leave. The next day I email my roommates apologizing for the confusion, but that it did not make logical sense to have something like emptying the dishwasher as part of kitchen duty because that is time sensitive if someone needs to use it. Plus, the rate it is filled varies depending on the kitchen use. I explained that I'm not there to empty it multiple times throughout the week, but I would be fine emptying it if it was full when I did my overall kitchen cleaning. My roommates responded angrily and basically said that it is my choice to not use the dishwasher, but that doesn't change the fact that I am obligated to empty it when I am on kitchen duty. We go back and forth some more and neither of them even acknowledges my points, that I am not living in the house 99% of the time and when I'm there I don't use any room but my own. I decided to keep the peace and continued doing my weekly chores, this meant driving an hour to clean and then leaving right after. Earlier this week I received an email from Tom saying that if I don't plan on participating in the cleaning rotation, I'll have to pay them both to make up for it. I sent a very polite email in an attempt to de-escalate things explaining that I have been driving in specifically to clean and that as roommates none of us have the right to demand anything beyond the terms of our lease. We are having a house meeting tonight to discuss this. I am so upset and nervous about meeting with them and I hope to gain some insight into what I should say. I am going to state that I am no longer willing to do the weekly rotation, but that I will pick up after myself and clean as I see fit whenever I am at the house, including the rooms I do not use. Is this fair? Do they have the right to demand I adhere to their cleaning rotation or ask for payment? I am not even at the house to make a mess, so I am confused at their insistence. I was fine with the rotation save for the dishwasher requirement and was willing to drive out once a week to fulfill my duty, but they have been so rude and uncompromising that I now don't want to go out of my way for them at all. Please help. Alright OP, I kinda see everybody's point here except for the dishwasher thing considering that doesn't necessarily mean that when you clean the kitchen you need to empty it or anything like that because it's like a separate appliance. At least that's my perspective. I do think they are being jerks about how they're, you know, confronting this whole situation because you all did have an agreement and a rotation to which you agreed to. And I totally understand that you don't use the kitchen or some of the other rooms but you did agree to a cleaning rotation. So in my mind this is follow through, right? However, I do believe that your cleaning rotation or roommate agreement regarding cleaning needs to definitely be revised. 
And considering your different schedule and the fact that you don't live in that house all of the time, well, then you shouldn't be cleaning that house if you haven't been there 99% of that time, right? So I absolutely agree that you need to talk to them and tell them, while you are living at that house full time, you know, while you're in school or whatever, then you'll adhere to the cleaning rotation that you guys have set up with some specific amends regarding who uses what and what they should clean. And when you're not there because school is out or whatever, then it has to be between the two of them. At least that's how I would do it. And what do you guys think or what would you do if you were in OP shoes? Let me know in the comments section and now let's move on to the community comments to see what they said. Random Banana Leaf says, You are completely in the right. In fact, you're going above and beyond by cleaning up at all, given that you're not even there anymore. They will try and take advantage of you and intimidate or manipulate you in this upcoming meeting. I urge you to remember you haven't done anything wrong and you are being completely reasonable. More than reasonable in my opinion, see above. And legally, they don't really have a leg to stand on, unless weekly rotation cleaning duties is in your lease. I imagine it's not. How long is your lease? Any chance you can move for the new school year? I imagined they'd be petty enough to make your life miserable if you continued to stay. Which is fine if you're at your parents' or boyfriend's, but during term time, you won't be. And trust me, flatmates can be an effing nightmare if they want to. Stand your ground in this meeting, OP. You don't make the mess, yet you're still cleaning it up. You don't need to empty the dishwasher as well. And OP responds, My lease isn't up until five months. I will be starting a teaching job in two months and doing my masters at the same time, so moving in the middle of that will be a nightmare. I really want to get out of my lease now, but I don't know if I'm allowed to over something so trivial. I am going to ask if they know someone to who I could transfer it, because I doubt any of us want to maintain our current relationship. Vesita says, you need to find a new place to live and fast. They can't change the rate of your lease. If they try, that's effectively breaking it. You might want to ask r slash legal advice. Most likely, they thought that having a girl live with them meant they would be getting a free maid service. Which they sort of were, but since you're never there in the summer and not making a mess, you really shouldn't be expected to come in to clean more than what you've agreed to. Now it may help if there was an expect list of chores that weekly cleaning entailed so it was clear, but that's something you'd all have to agree to. Deleted says, completely and utterly ignore them. You have no obligation to them whatsoever beyond what's explicitly outlined in your lease agreement. If I were you, I'd be indignant and furious that two people were trying to bully me into paying for something I didn't want. And although possibly not super healthy, I'd refuse out of spite. And Opie responds, I am furious, but I would like to live there peacefully if possible. When I first moved in, they wanted me to split their direct TV bill with them, even though I don't have a TV in my room or access to theirs. There is no communal television. And I know they have used my private bathroom when I'm not there, so my annoyance with them has been mounting. Thank you for using the word bully. I felt bullied, but it wasn't sure if I was overreacting. Additional information from Opie's comments. To clarify, I never used the kitchen at all. I haven't bought groceries in months. When I was there during the week for school, I was gone from 7am to 9pm every day so I just ate out. I also never used the kitchen because they made a two-day rule, meaning they didn't have to wash their dishes for two days. The flies were enough for me to elect to eat out. Also, I stay at my parents most of the time and occasionally with my boyfriend. I needed to live there while school was in session because the daily commute from my parents' house was miserable. I want to move out so badly and get my own place, but I have a pesky lease to deal with. Now, they do clean, but the whole cleaning rotation was put in place because my one roommate would leave dirty dishes out for a week at a time. He now does them within two days, which I still find gross. I wish I could skip the meeting, but out of respect, I am going to go and hear them out, even if the end result is the same. I plan on acknowledging their point of view, but staying firm in my stance. I don't think they have done anything technically wrong, we just have different views on what is expected of a roommate, and unfortunately for them, my right to say no to their request outweighs their demands. I just wish they would recognize how good of a deal they are getting. Basically, they have one third of the house paid for without the added burden of a third roommate hanging around and making a mess. I have tried so hard to be a good roommate when I'm there. 
I'm quiet, I don't use the common rooms, I buy things for the house and don't ask for compensation, unlike them who will bill me for things without asking if they should buy them in the first place. Man, I am getting more pissed off every minute. My boyfriend is coming over as well. I don't want him sitting in on the conversation because I want to present myself as a competent adult, but he's going to stay in my room in case I feel threatened. He really wants me to put a lock on my door, but I feel like that sends the wrong message. I don't think these guys would ever hurt me. They are just weird and rude. I really hope we can have a civil discussion about everything, but I just have a really bad feeling about them, especially my roommate Tom. I feel so uncomfortable. Alright, well the community sides absolutely with OP and OP gave us a lot more context as to what the dynamic inside that house is like and all of her problems. So now let's move on to the update to see how this conversation went and how this story ends. First of all, thank you to everyone who commented on my original post. I went into our house meeting armed with an arsenal of talking points, but the conversation was not nearly as hostile as expected. My boyfriend was listening to everything from my room, so I felt a lot more confident having him there. Thanks love, smiley face. This is really long, but it's helping me clarify in my mind what happened and how to move forward. We sat together and John, late 40s male, said he was glad we were all finally meeting in person because he can't stand communicating over email. Tom, late 30s male, looked pissed and started talking about what I have been doing to cause all of this. I was ready to call him out on everything and defend myself, but John interjected on my behalf. He said that it wasn't fair to put it all on me and that we all have to take responsibility for ourselves. So before we discussed the cleaning issues, we had a quick conversation about communication. John said that we really should be meeting in person to discuss everything and that talking over email was part of the problem. Tom pointed out that we all have busy schedules, so meeting in person is problematic. The conversation turned back to me and John asked that I let them know when I'll be gone because I am a young woman living in the city and they don't know if I'm okay or not when I'm not there for long periods of time. I thought there was a bit absurd since I don't need them to keep track of my whereabouts, but I agreed to let them know so we can better coordinate our schedules. I didn't comment on the safety issue. Once that was settled, I moved the conversation to the cleaning rotation. I told them that although we had initially agreed to the weekly cleaning rotation, it no longer made sense with my schedule. I explained how I was driving just to clean and that it felt really unfair. John seemed sympathetic to my point of view and said he understood why I was frustrated. He said that we all use the house in different ways, some more than others, and that we need to find a way to make things equal. Tom was pretty quiet during this part of the talk and he looked angry. John then turned to Tom and said that he requests that he does a more thorough wipe down of the kitchen counters after he cooks. Tom snapped back saying he doesn't know how he could possibly do a better job. John got up and said he'd show them. I sat at the table for a second but then decided to follow them into the kitchen. John pointed to the counters and said that they are getting ants because there are crumbs. Tom was fuming. He said that he is already wiping them down multiple times a day and that if he has to be more careful about that, then John needs to stop leaving plates on the floor for his dog to lick. John agrees to this, but Tom is clearly pissed off and keeps going, saying that things need to be more equitable. John agrees and once again brings up communication, pointing out how Tom is very angry and this should be a non-issue if he pointed it out earlier. I stood in the corner of the kitchen and watched for a bit. At this point, it was clear to me that Tom had been projecting his frustrations onto me because he felt he was being blamed for the kitchen's mess. Why not shift the blame onto the one who never uses the kitchen? That makes so much sense. I was annoyed but also entertained by their bickering. John then brought up another issue with the kitchen. He asked that Tom only run the dishwasher when it is full because we are in a drought and that he takes it very personally. Tom snaps at John and says that he runs it so frequently because he is trying to keep up with doing the dishes because if he doesn't, he gets scolded for leaving dishes out. John says he appreciates that, but he can't just rinse the dishes and put them in without running it. Tom says that he is going to clean as he sees fit. At this point, the two of them are clearly angry and annoyed with one another, so I step in to play peacekeeper. I explain how anxious I was before meeting with them because I allowed my emotions to build and grow and that clearly the same thing happened with them. 
I said that we need to acknowledge that we are all trying our best and that we shouldn't automatically think the worst of one another or point fingers. I brought up Tom's last email where he said that I wasn't doing my job in the house even though I had been driving in just to clean. Tom admitted that he didn't know I was doing that and that from now on I should text them when I said I did my job. I told him it was offensive that he automatically jumped to the conclusion that I wasn't helping out instead of asking me. He agreed but didn't fully apologize. John said that we should each spend some time thinking about how to make a new system that is equal for everyone. I explained that there is a difference between equal and fair, that just because something is split evenly doesn't mean it is the fairest solution, and pointed out once again the problem with the cleaning rotation if I'm not there most of the time. John suggested that we hire a maid and split the cost, but that every time someone cleans they deduct how much they contribute to the maid. I called him out on this and said that it still isn't fair for me because I would obviously be paying the bulk of the maid's fee since I wouldn't be there to clean or make the mess in the first place and deduct from my portion. I regret not pointing out that if we were already cleaning, hiring a maid is redundant and a waste of money. I said I would be more comfortable just cleaning up after ourselves and coming together for more thorough cleaning if things get out of hand. I once again stated that for things to be fair, they cannot be equal because we do not use the rooms equally. I was so prepared for a big blowout and was ready to move out, but that won't be happening. I will not agree to anything that requires me to clean up after them in any capacity or contribute money in any way. Nothing is truly settled yet, but hopefully they will leave me alone for now, especially after Tom falsely accused me of not participating. I am going to write out what I'm willing to do as far as cleaning, and if they disagree or fight me in any way, I am going to suggest that I move out so they can find someone with a similar mindset. I am also going to address the hypocrisy that they expect me to let them know when I clean when they have never done the same in return. I refuse to be micromanaged in my own home. Extended from OP's comments, I don't mind helping to do general chores. I was fine with that part of the arrangement. I just don't want to drive out of my way to empty the dishwasher when I haven't used the kitchen in months. I am not there most of the time, so I can only clean proportionately to my time spent in the house. Anything beyond that requires special trips and I can't do it. I just want things to be fair and they haven't been. My roommates agreed that it hasn't been for me, so hopefully we can go forward peacefully. One option I am going to suggest is that we each have one area of cleaning that we are mostly responsible for. John is very picky about the kitchen and Tom has been particular about the floors and dust collection, whether I am there or not. So I think I may suggest we break it down that way. We still pick up after ourselves and clean as we go, but the more thorough cleaning will be broken up that way without micromanagement. There was clearly resentment between the two of them and I think that spilled on to me. I think we will all be better about communicating going forward. Thank you all again. Well OP, I think you're right. I think they both had bones to pick with each other and you were just caught in the middle. Anyways, it sounds like a good resolution so let's hope they don't get carried away with how much you have to do that isn't fair. You are absolutely right in that. So all the best in the future OP and thank you so much for sharing. Now let's move on to the next post. This post is from the subreddit Malicious Compliance and it's by user Monteflash. So you want to make sure our shed is to code? Our neighbor reported our old but sturdy shed to the city for being too large without a permit. Inspector comes out and measures. Nope, the shed is well under the size limits and doesn't need a permit. The husband starts asking questions about the rules and gets all the specifics on what is allowed. The shed is old and very basic. Why not have a bigger, better shed? Oh, and by the way, the inspector knows the neighbor. She used to work in the planning department, knows the rules, and clearly was just trying to make trouble. Her MO. He looks into her property and says he can see a good half dozen issues if we'd like to report them. We laugh, but nah, we're gonna go the malicious compliance route. We rip down the shed, hoping the neighbor is smugly gloating to herself. We do nothing for three weeks. Well, except draw up plans, buy materials, lay the foundation, and line up a couple of construction friends to help. Then, one Saturday, our glorious big new shed goes up. Now, we hadn't heard from this neighbor in three weeks, but now she's asking about our new shed. She'd love to see inside if we don't mind. We did. Cue another inspection notice for building a granny flat, the shed, on our property. Obviously, the inspection goes fine. 
Well, except for those violations on the neighbor's property. That unpermitted open fire pit built up against the retaining wall and fence is a concern. We don't want it burning down our new shed, haha. <laughs> She's got a couple of guys out there right now jackhammering out concrete. I think I'll go offer them some cold drinks from the mini fridge in the new shed. Nicely done, OP. Like we say in my country, she went for wool and ended up sheared. Thanks for sharing, OP. And it's that time that we've reached the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed today's stories. I really did enjoy reading them to you. So if you did, then don't be shy and go ahead and give the video a like. And don't forget to subscribe or even share this video with people that you might think will enjoy my storytelling. Also, if you have the time, go down to the video description and check out all the links I have for you, from our Discord community to my channel merch. And finally, I'd like to say thank you for watching. It really means a lot to me that you enjoy my videos. And having said all that, I'll see you guys in the next video.